part of the world. Uh, we often joke within gateways that there are more sheep than people within our parish. There are a few local market towns, but largely rural, dispersed, um, and largely local ethnicity. One of my roles is uh, running, managing the family farm here at Norham West Mains. We've got an arable farm of around 550 acres. Uh, I use contractors to help out with a lot of the work to allow me to have my involvement with gateways. So day to day it's management and working here on the family farm. When I first came here about eight years ago as a locum, it was quite obvious that there were no young people and no young families in the church congregation. So we had a look at what might happen about that and it was during that process of uh, looking at the problem and trying to come up with some ideas that the Emerging Ministries Fund in the Church of Scotland was announced. And they really got behind, they, they understood the whole genre, the whole language of Emerging Church if you like. And they got behind our project, got behind the ideas and for the first three years were, were, were very generous in their funding of Gateways. The juxtaposition of the two movements in the church, the, the traditional congregation and gateways, work together very well. They're not seen as competitive to one another. When we started gateways, it was clear that the, whatever it was going to turn into, it wasn't just a means of getting people into church. It was actually to create a new form of church, a new way of doing church that appealed to people who uh, were, were not uh, currently in the congregation and who, for whom traditional church models um, weren't really cutting the mustard. Being in such a rural context, uh, gateways perhaps, un unlike other fresh expressions, can't afford the luxury of saying that we're, we're looking to work with one particular grouping of people. Uh, if we were to have a church for skateboarders, I think we might have one or maybe two in our target grouping. So within Gateways we've decided that it was important that we had different elements or fractals, parts of what Gateways was about that joined together to make the whole Gateways family. It's really nice to see you. Just want to say a little bit about what we think the gathering is about. First off is the Gateways Gathering, which currently is a monthly event, Sunday afternoon. It is aimed particularly at families with younger children. We worship God, we pray, we look at scripture and we eat. I think Gateway is more suitable for people who are come from an unchurched background. It's non-threatening, we don't judge people from the sort of background they come to, and it's very family friendly. You know, there's a lot of young children come along, and it's just a very relaxed type of preaching. One of the reasons we're coming along is because of the sense of community that they have here. And it's people who are like-minded, um, they are very, very welcoming, and I think people just like to pull together. It's relevant to the area that we live in. On the second Sunday morning of the month, we meet together for what we call Gateways Fellowship, which has a slightly different emphasis to the Gateways Gathering. It is more designed for people who, are, who perhaps are, are wanting to look a little deeper and take their discipleship journey on a little further. Interactive teaching, developing elements of worship in different ways, but again responding to the needs of people who were at the gathering who were saying, we'd like a little more trying to listen and embrace what they were after. Working alongside the traditional inherited church model has, uh, has been thrilling in that my role, my work with Gateways is, is, is not to enhance and develop and grow the congregation of the traditional inherited church, but we have been genuinely released to build Gateways as its own congregation. That is liberating. Uh, and, and Bill, Bill Landale, the minister, has, has been key in that relationship. We get along well together, we minister together, We've, uh, he being an ordained Church of Scotland minister. We have um, carried out baptisms together, we've baptised young people in the River Tweed, which was a wonderful experience, and I've now been involved with weddings and funerals. And the relationship with the inherited parish church, I think, it, it is one of the strengths and keys to gateways developing and continuing to grow. I was contacted by um, the local Methodist minister in berwick upon tweed that then was. He told me they were having this course, the MSI, Mission Shaped Introduction. Come along, he said, if, if you like it, maybe some of you could go on to do the Mission Shaped Ministry course. Well, I thought this would be a great idea for four or five other people within gateways. I didn't think I would be bothering about that. Took them along to the MSI course for those few weeks, after which, 
None of these folks decided they wanted to go on and do mission shape ministry, <laughs> but I'd fallen in love with it. So I stayed the course, spent the year, uh, and it was a really helpful process for me, just looking at reshaping ministry uh, and mission in, in different modern contexts. Working with unchurched uh, people is, is really great, often can be challenging. Um, because there's no boundaries, there are no rules in, in, in some senses. So it, it has really made me reflect theologically on far deeper levels than I had in traditional ministry contexts over the last seven or eight years, which I think can only be healthy. A lot of the people that come along and get involved with gateways, it's through their families. We're building spiritual values from the bottom up, trying to listen to what those guys are saying to us and trying to meet them where they are. Leadership and developing leadership has been uh, in, in some ways a challenge. Um, again, I often joke that some of the people who are on the core team of Gateways wouldn't even be allowed to give hymn books out in an ordinary church. But it's good and it means risk and being given the permission to take those risks in an environment of mission where, where, where failure isn't a problem is actually liberating and very helpful. Taking people on the journey with us is something that's really key to us. And alongside our Gateways Gathering and Gateways Fellowship, we have a Tuesday evening small group setting. Uh, if everybody turns up, there's 15. So we're beginning to have problems with that. We struggle to fit into people's front rooms, for people's living rooms. Um, but that is a, a place that is, is far more intentionally about learning at a deeper level, about growing together, fellowshipping together, uh, and moving on in the discipleship journey. The small group, for me, is a very safe place um, where our friendships have been developed in a, a wonderful way really sharing the word and also encouraging one another in our day-to-day -day lives the effect that it has on my family is that they can come along as well if they like and do although neither of them uh, both my son and my husband attend church, they do get very involved with gateways. We hope that future ministry and elements of future ministry within the Gateways family, if you like, we hope that they're able to be guided, led by the people that God leads to us, that we respond to their needs. The ministry that I feel I have here, running the family farm, sowing the seed, seeing that risk as the seed goes in and wondering, will the harvest come? Some years it's a great harvest, others, fail completely. And being able to reflect on gateways in a similar context I think has been really helpful for me. To see that what we do with gateways as we look to the future is so seed. That is broadcast, that is spread. Some of those places will see great fruit, I've no doubt in that. I guess there's the sense of faith to believe that. Other elements of it will fall to the wayside and there will be no particular harvest. But I think as I plant the seed into the farm, I do so, it goes into the ground with faith. Likewise, as we develop conversations, as we seek to, to get to know other families within the Gateways context, we trust a God who, who, who will make a difference, who will see some fruit come to fruition and Gateways sustaining and growing into the future.